everyone. Welcome to our pre recorded multi division online provider webinar. This webinar is part of a broader webinar series focused on providing professional learning opportunities for virtual learning stakeholders. We are so glad that you chose to view this webinar and hope that you find it informative and valuable. My name is Dr. Meg Foley and I serve as the coordinator of virtual learning at the Virginia Department of Education. Joining me today is my colleague, Mr. Reginald Fox. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today. I serve as the virtual learning specialist and we are happy that you've joined us. I mentioned earlier that this webinar is part of a larger group of professional learning webinars focused on virtual learning in Virginia. On this slide, you can see the mission of our series is to provide school divisions, schools, staff and other stakeholders with information related to virtual learning Virginia with an emphasis on policies, procedures, professional development and implementation of virtual programs. Today's focus webinar is on the multi-division online provider monitoring report, final surveys, feedback, and preparation for the upcoming school year. And as we prepare to provide you with information about the monitoring report, we want to share some important changes to the information required. Page one is the certification page and has been expanded to capture contact information so that we have the most accurate information on file. The next section, section one, provides profile information that's used to update our MOP website called AMOP and it includes all the details about the MOP. The information recorded into the AMOP system enables school divisions and other interested parties to view information about you as a MOP, course offerings, and other important information. Section two of the monitoring report includes new questions that relate to the program implementation, compliance, instructional practices, professional learning, and communication. As you know, building a positive relationship of the, with the students and the parents and the stakeholders is paramount to the success of any online program. So maintaining regular communication and engaging with students and families is important. The final section of the report, section three, is about data collection, reporting, and communicating information to all stakeholders. As Dr. Foley and I mentioned previously, we are working closely with our Office of Data Services at VDOE to improve the accuracy of collecting and reporting data. Therefore, it is vital that MOPs maintain regular communication with school divisions and report data accurately. We have made significant changes to section three of the report so that requesting data from the MOP helps us to align and enhance the data reports that are made available from data services. And finally, in our annual compliance, we'd like to serve, have the providers that are serving students in 21-22 complete all sections providers not serving students in 21-22 complete only page one and section three. And those MOPs that are in renewal for this year, whether you're serving students or not, should complete all sections. Our next topic focuses on the renewal process. It's important to note that the renewal re requirements are based upon the Virginia Board of Education approved processes of 2010. Those requirements include a full review of each approved MOP every three years and the submission of programmatic changes and updates via the annual monitoring report. The renewal process um, has a committee 
and the oversight committee evaluates information related to program changes, stakeholder survey data, and data related to both course completion and student growth and achievement. Number three on the slide highlights decision-making requirements. As indicated, the committee will make renewal recommendations within 30 business days, and the state superintendent will make a final decision within the following 15 business days. Each year, we send our MOP contacts a link to a survey in the email that provides the most up-to-date annual monitoring reports. That survey link must be sent to participant stakeholders and provides us with valuable feedback and data from parents and students. The slide highlights some examples of data that the DOE can extract from the survey results. It is important to note that it is required that the link be sent to your stakeholders as we utilize this information when evaluating annual and renewal year performance. So the bottom line in this section is that an email will be sent out soon with both the most up-to-date annual monitoring report as well as the link to the stakeholder survey. An important tip, stakeholders must choose the provider's name from a drop-down list. So including your program name in the email to your stakeholders can prove valuable. Also, please take note, the monitoring reports are due to DOE by June 30th. And as we look at planning ahead, we will review monitoring reports, survey results, and communicate any feedback as necessary. And as you prepare for the upcoming school year, please be compliant with all contracts and information, especially that teachers are approved with appropriate licenses for any courses taught. As a part of our webinar series, we had an informative presentation on compliance with licensure from Maggie Clemens, Director of Licensure and School Leadership. As you contract with school divisions, please ensure that information about your organization, enrollment, transfer of student records, orientation, student information, parent information, and other important details are transparent and shared with all stakeholders. Additional information may be found at our virtual learning website. We thank you for your participation in this webinar.